I only crashed once. <laughs> I heard it. I heard like, oh bloody hell, and everyone like, ah. Oh! <laughs> so that, that counts. Chalking it. <laughs> All right, you guys have seen all of our reviews from the fall field test with our aggressive trail bikes, and it's time to boil it down to the bikes that we liked, the bikes that we didn't like, and some surprises. Now, our six aggressive trail bikes for this field test were specialized new Stump Jumper Evo Alloy, the Starling Murmur, Propane's Hugene, the Ghost Riot Trail Full Party, Score's new 4060 ST and the raw jib. Now Kaz, I'm gonna start this off with maybe the hardest question, but also maybe the easiest question of the bunch. Which bike did you like the least? Which bike did you struggle with? It's gonna be that Ghost Riot Trail full party. It just didn't quite live up to my expectations. You know, on paper, I like the concept of a bike with 140 millimeters front and rear travel, but built burly, something you kind of toss around, still get down some gnarly stuff. Just seems, I just like the idea and it did execute it well. Alicia? I agree. The effort was there. It was a nice idea. Execution was a little lacking and it just resulted in a bike that was pretty hard to get along with. So you guys said the execution was lacking, but let's let's boil it down to what actually is wrong with this bike. What didn't you like and why? Yeah, I think the head angle is too steep. It's a 66 degree head tube angle. And I think they could have slackened that out to give it more of that downhill ability that it looks like it should have. Mm -hmm. um, it's on the heavier side, 36 pounds. You know, it's got a coil shock but that's still two pounds heavier than the steel bike we have with a coil shock. So 36 pounds is pretty heavy for a 140 I mil mean, bike. That's enough that it does make a difference on the trail, yeah, doesn't it? Exactly. And then the geometry is also a little bit off for the size. Super sizing. fit geometry. Yeah, super fit geometry. It wasn't quite a super fit for us. It could have potentially gone with a size large, but then you end up with a really long seat tube length. So there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't quite come together to make the bike we we're looking for. All right, and Alicia, you also mentioned that it maybe didn't pedal as quite as well as you would have liked for a trail bike with 140 millimeters of travel. Sure, I mean, you can look at it and it is a 36 pound bike with a coil shock that wasn't the most supportive coil shock either. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's turn these frowns upside down and talk about the bikes that you did like. Now, I think I know what your favorite bike is, Cavs, but just tell me anyway. You know, I will say that out of all these bikes, this is probably the most solid group of contenders we've had in a while. Like they're all so much fun to ride. Um, you know, sometimes it's more of a split where some bikes are just your favorites and some are kind of meh. These ones I'd happily take any of, five out of six of them I could take home. It'd be my aggressive trail bike and I'd be totally fine. I think standouts, that score 4060, that would have been the very top of my list, except for that mud catcher. The oh. fact that it just fills up with mud, it's kind of a deal breaker for me living in the Pacific Northwest, but the way that that bike handled on Does the Does it actually fill with mud that bad that it could mm -hmm. be issue? Yeah, it just be like it's really hard to clean. They, like I said in the uh, in the review video, it does have a little um, piece of moto foam to help it from really fully packing yeah. up. But it yeah. just gets in like so they know it's an issue. Yeah, it just gets in every nook and cranny, and I don't want to have to spend a bunch of time cleaning bikes after every ride. So yeah. that knocked it down a notch. But the bike's handling um, is definitely up there. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the time on that. But I think for one bike, if I had to take one home to have for a while. Um, as my own bike, I think that that specialized Stumpy Evo is gonna be the one just because of the adaptability and it really suits my riding style. Yeah. Alicia? I would have to go with the propane. I think- mm. I was expecting you to say the specialized, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah, the specialized is more versatile for sure. It has that adjustability and the head angle adjustment is such a fantastic feature. Mm. Plus the swap box, I'm chronically underprepared and having a little box where things could just live on my bike, I think would improve things for me. Okay. However, the propane pedals so nicely and feels so capable on the trail that it's really rare, I think, when you find those two things in the same bike. Yeah, usually when you get a bike that pedals that well, it kind of lacks in the descending mm -hmm. ability, but it sounds like this bike manages to do both somehow? And somehow it harnesses the, the efficiency of the suspension while climbing to make it more fun rather than less fun on the downhills. I do want to talk about that rod jib a little bit. Mm. It's not my favorite bike, but it's definitely up there and I like what they've done with it. There's something about it that kind of kept it's one of those bikes when you had them all lined up outside, I would kind of keep grabbing it, sneaking an extra ride. It looks good, man. It looks good. Mm -hmm. It's super solid. It's got really good weatherproofing. Um, the geometry is fairly moderate, I'd say. It's not crazy, but it has excellent traction. And it's a bike, like for me, traction plays a high priority just because a lot of my rides tend to be wet and slippery. So if a bike can stick to the ground, 
that kind of suits my needs. So that that raw, I could see that being a fun bike to have kind of for a long time. That's like your five year bike, just because it's not a lot that's going to need to be replaced on it. Right, right. Alicia, what about surprises? So we knew the bikes that we were going to mm -hmm. be riding before we came here, of course. Of course, we're thinking about what to expect. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised by anything? Good and bad. I guess the thing that sticks out to me most is around maintenance. Something that surprised me a lot on the score was how big a deal breaker that we've been calling it the cradle of filth is. Yes. That hole is truly a problem on that bike. And the bike is otherwise really amazing. Yeah. And that just takes down a few notches for me. On the flip side, both the jib and the propane had these big bearing covers that should keep dirt and water out of the bike a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I think that moves those two up. All right. So while we're talking about some issues, did you guys have any mechanical issues with any components on any of these bikes over the past two weeks of riding nonstop? It's been a pretty good run, realistically. Yeah, no yeah. major ones. Let's see, mm -hmm. some of the dropper posts got a little bit sticky. A mm -hmm. couple of those Fox transfer posts just started acting up. They just need a little bit of lube, but yeah. you know, they've been a lot of muddy, wet rides. Like it was been raining a couple of inches every day. So um, yeah, it's been super wet. So that's one thing that cropped up. Otherwise, it's been pretty smooth sailing, which is nice. You know, bikes have gotten to a point where we can thrash them pretty hard and not have to do a ton of work to them after yeah. every day. So. Yeah. What about you, Alicia? Any issues? Were bikes creaking at all after all this rain and grime? Any anything? There was that one time when the Starling main pivot bolt came loose, yeah. and before that, the Starling shock was creaking just a tiny bit, which may have been related to the pivot bolt coming loose. Yep. Other than that, though, they were pretty solid. Bolts stayed for the most part where bolts needed to stay. What about you, Kaz? Is there anything that you were surprised about? I think that Starling surprised me. I kind of had an idea in my head of how it would work and how it would ride, um, but it actually had more energy than I expected. It was lighter than I expected. So a little bit more versatile than I initially anticipated. So yeah, that's yeah. a fun bike. It, it was nice to ride something different. You know, we do ride a lot of yep. carbon and aluminum bikes and getting that steel one in the mix. I really enjoyed its cornering performance and just that little extra flex. Is Kind of a neat feature for me so i think that bike surprised me in a good way yeah one thing that i want to mention is how capable all these bikes sound like mm -hmm. there was a time not that long ago when these bikes i think they could have raced like an, an enduro race had been just fine you know mm -hmm. and of course i get it like things have moved on and these are not enduro bikes they're definitely not enduro bikes but at the same time aren't you guys blown away by how capable these things are like all around versatility yeah, we're living in a great time for bikes that's just your your mountain bike. You know, these bikes have, whether they have a Fox 36 on the front or a Lyric, those used to be the Enduro forks. And now they've kind of stepped down a notch. You got yeah. these bigger, burlier forks for the bigger, burlier Enduro bikes. But what it means is there's plenty of front end stiffness on these bikes. Mm -hmm. Head angles have slackened up enough so that you can go down pretty gnarly stuff and not feel scared. And yeah. I think that's a good thing. I guess more of a philosophical question for you. Do you think that takes away from the trail bikeness of these things or do they all pedal so well and handle so well on the climbs that you get that downhill capability without sacrificing? I think it does depend on the bike. Some of them were a little more enduro-y of the bunch, this is the Starling, and that bike is long and slack and doesn't pedal quite as well as some of them, whereas the Propane still feels plenty capable along with the score, and those ones, they'll pedal where you want and also hold their own on the descent. So I don't think it really undermines any of the categories, you just have to parse out what you want from each bike rather than choosing by the category. Yeah, and I think we did call them aggressive trail bikes for a reason. Mm -hmm. Going into this, we knew that these are the bikes that are kind of blurring that boundary. When I think of trail bike, I do think of something that's you know going up and down, even amounts, focused on the clients, focused on the sense. But we knew these bikes would be a little more focused on the sense without going to full blown enduro. We, we have to call them something, don't yeah, we? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a category. They are what you will, but you know we kind of took the, the travel amounts as well, so we kept it to one thirty five to one hundred fifty mils of travel. Yeah, um, just to kind of. There's these cool group of bikes in here and we want to check them out. Yeah. Let's go back to components for a little bit. Alicia, were there some other things that you liked? I think my favorite thing that stood out to me is those Newman wheels that we had on both the jib and the propane. Just the utter silence added to those bikes and they're already really quiet bikes. They already feel like they just have it together, but that silence really made it even better. You don't, the buzzing, like when you're coasting, like pumping through terrain and it's like zzz, I don't need a buzzing. And then if you're riding with somebody, Whoever's in front of you, they know you're not pedaling when they could hear the buzzing. What if I just shouted, I'm not pedaling, I'm not pedaling, I'm it's not, not pedaling. It's not the same. <laughs> Kaz, what about you? I think overall, like looking at all these bikes, the one thing I would like to see, all bikes that are size large should have longer travel dropper posts. We had some yeah. that had 160 mil, which is, you know, a year or two ago was fine, but now there's 200 mil posts out there. Even 180 is pretty good. So I'd yeah. like 
to be some sort of unwritten rule. If you're making a size large bike in this category, it should have 180 post or 200 mil post. Yeah. And then also high rise bars. We had a couple bikes in here with mm -hmm. like almost flat bars, which I thought that trend was done. So for me, I usually like a you know 30 mil rise bar would be nice. So if you're listening out there, people that make these decisions, higher rise, higher rise bars are a good choice for this type of bike. So I like that. Okay, before we wrap this up and get out of here, we have to talk about what bike these two are gonna buy with their own money. Casimir, go first. Bikes are really expensive. They are so expensive. But I think I'd either go with the Stump Jumper Evo Alloy that we have, the $5,600 model, uh, depending on my bank account, or even the one below that. I think it's $3,800, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So that one I'd probably buy, upgrade some things eventually. But I think that both of those bikes, you know, get in around that $4,000 or $5,000 mark, still a lot of money, but what you're getting for that price is pretty fair. Mm -hmm. Alicia, where would you spend all your fun tokens? I have to agree. That Specialized is the best value by far, and bikes are so expensive. Some of these nicer bikes are pushing twice what that Specialized costs at base level, so gonna have to go with that one. And are they twice as good? Not quite. Not specialized quite. is really good. <laughs> yeah. Golden Retriever of Bikes. Golden Retriever of Bikes, everybody. There you go. That is our aggressive trail bike round table from our fall field test here in Pemberton, BC. Let us know if you agree with the choices that these two made in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any field test videos.